Welcome to Coffee the Simple Gospel, channel where we talk, listen, and we try to work it out. In this video, I would like to take a look what causes discouragement and how to get out of it if it's possible, if we are willing. Before we fully jump into this video, hit that like button. And for those who have not subscribed to this channel yet, please hit that subscribe button. Also, that notification bell to remind you when new video is released. Costs you nothing and helps to this channel to keep growing. And do not forget to write comments below as well. And it is important actually that you would watch this video to the end. Okay, let's jump into this video I called What Causes Discouragement and How to Get Out of It If It's Possible. The story of Nehemiah highlights four my just sources of discouragement. Let's look at these first of them. Fatigue. The people in Judah said, the strength of the laborers is giving out. In other words, they had wore themselves to exhaustion. They were worn out physically, mentally, and emotionally. Sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that discouragement is strictly a spiritual and emotional problem. Fact is that the real problem is we are just burned out. Have you found yourself in that place? We need rest and renewal. Indeed, sometimes the more spiritual things you can do is relax or go to bed or take some time off. When do fatigue and discouragement surface? Look at verse 6 of Nehemiah 4. So we rebuilt the wall until all of it reached half of its height. Do you know when you are most apt to get discouraged? When you are halfway into a project. Everybody works hard at first. The Bible says the people work with all their heart. Why? Because of the newness of the project, of the freshness and excitement. It was exciting and novel, but after a while, the newness wore off and the work got boring. Have you experienced this kind of life as well? Life settles into a routine, then a rut, then a ritual. Be careful when fatigue walks in, faith walks out. That's why the in Psalm 23, 2-3 says, He makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me besides quiet waters. He restores my soul. So fatigue is one of the biggest causes of discouragement and it often shows up about midpoint. It's why we leave so many projects unfinished. Bottom line, if you need time off, take it. Nehemiah 4.10 There is so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. Course number two, the Jews were building a new wall, but old broken rocks were thrown everywhere along with dirt and dried out mortar. And when they looked at so much rubbish, they became discouraged and lost sight of their goal. There was so much junk in their lives that they didn't know how to get on with the real business of living. Can you relate to that? Anytime you undertake an important project, there will be rubbish to remove, and sometimes it gets frustrating. You can't avoid this, but you can learn what to do with it so you don't give up on your plan. What's the rubbish in your life? Trivial things that waste your time, consume your energy, and keep you from becoming all you want to be or all you want to achieve. Things that keep you from doing what's most important, like building a relationship with your spouse and children, or being active in your area of giftedness, at church, at work, in society. The rubbish in life is those things that get in your way. The interruptions that keep you from accomplishing your, your goals. And these are the things you need to deal with. In other words, you need to take out trash. Nobody else is going to do, do it for you. God won't, and you can't pry it out either. God placed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and said, take care of it. 
It's in maintaining the blessings God has given you that you learn the difference between what's important in life and what's not. And that's a lesson you will keep learning over and over and over again. Never stop. Nehemiah 4.10, we cannot rebuild the wall. Failure is the third reason we become discouraged is reflected in the Israelites' complaint. We cannot rebuild the wall. In essence, what the diver is saying is, we are too tired. We are too tired. It's not possible. It's foolish to try. We give up because they were unable to finish the job as quickly as planned. Their confidence plummeted. They lost heart and become discouraged. Question, how do you handle failure in your life? Do you sit down and hold a pity party? <laughs> do you say, poor me, I can't get this job done. I can't do it. Do you start complaining? It's impossible. It can't be done. I was a fool to even try. Do you blame other people? Everybody else let me down. They didn't do their part of the job or whatever needed to be done. The difference between winners and losers is winners see failure as a temporary setback, opportunity to learn something new. They have learned to look beyond various losers see failure as permanent. Gosh, it's vital. Each time a winner gets knocked down, Proverbs 24, 16, they get up again. There is an adage that says, in the confrontation between the stream and the rock, the stream always wins, not through strength, but through perseverance. Can you see it? The water slowly pushes, 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 persevere, and it's coming through. It's when faithfulness is most difficult, that is the most necessary. The secret to success is start from scratch and keep on scratching. So when you get discouraged, stand on this scriptural promise. Hebrews 10, 35 to 36. Keep on being brave. It will bring you great rewards. Learn to be patient so that you will please God and be given what He has promised. Promised come through patience. Be brave, be patient, and you will succeed. Nehemiah 4.11 says, Our enemy said, we will kill them and put an end to the work. Cause number four, fear. Our enemy said, before they know it or see us, we will be right there among them and will kill them and put an end to the work. Joke. Why did Israel's enemies not want the walls of Jerusalem to be rebuilt? Resentment. A wall around a city guaranteed its protection and prosperity. So first they criticized the Jews, then they threatened them, but notice who got discouraged first. Nehemiah 4.12 Then the Jews who lived near them came and told us ten times over, wherever you turn, thou will attack us. When you hang around negative people long enough, you pick up their negativity. When you listen to someone repeatedly say, it can't be done, eventually you start believing them. If your life is dogs, you will catch the fleas. So pick the right company. Avoid people who strengthen your fear and align yourself with those who build up your faith. Do you have fears that are making you feel discouraged right now? That are preventing you from developing and, and growing and achieving your goals and get better? To conquer addiction, to conquer sickness? Do you fear criticism or embarrassment? Are you afraid to take that big step and look for a new job? Take a new challenge to change things in your life? Maybe you are afraid you are not capable of the task. Maybe you are worried you won't hold up under pressure. Maybe it's the fear that you have to be perfect. 
Count on it. Fear always discourages you. In whom are you trusting? If it's in yourself or other people, read this promise. Deuteronomy 31 eight. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. If you are watching this video, you are here because looking for some answers in your life. The most important issue in your, in our life, your life, is what will happen when we die. If we want to end up in eternity with God and even before death to have some quality of life, we need to acknowledge the one who done it all. For us to have, we call it sinner's prayer. If you are ready to hand over your life to God and let him to direct your path all the way to eternity, can you pray with me this simple prayer of faith? So just repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you, you are God and Son of the Father God. I believe that you died for my sin and that you rise from the dead to life. I want to trust you as my Savior and follow you as my Lord. From this day forward, guide my life and help me to do your will. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Friend, you pray this prayer for the first time. Welcome into the kingdom of God, to the kingdom which is everlasting, kingdom which promise you peace, health, and no more tears. I've been looking forward to see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and thumb up. See you later. Bye.